Hello and welcome to the Book of Leaves podcast. My name is Cara and I am the host. Thank you very much for joining me for episode 37 of Book of Leaves. Hello to all listeners, new and old. It is lovely to have you here. This is a podcast where every episode I interview someone who's doing something good for the planet in some way and we get to know them, learn from them and we take a leaf from their book to add to our own way of eco-friendly living. This episode we're going to be talking to Ashlyn Byrne who is the creator of New, what used to be called the New Wardrobe. It's this app that you basically sign up to and you can upload your clothes and swap and share and it's it's a way to tackle fast fashion but especially for people like myself who can't always afford to when they're buying new to buy from sustainable brands because obviously they're a little bit more expensive and we'll talk about that and the kind of pros and cons and reasons behind it so we'll go into a few different things and anything that we mention is of course as always linked in the show notes and if it's not linked properly in your show notes check out the website bookoflesepodcast.com and they're crowdfunding at the moment we'll talk about that a little bit in the episode but that is also linked in the show notes they are crowdfunding until the start of November the end of October so around two weeks so if you're listening to this in the future future scratch that and um, hopefully they reach their target and yeah that's it I'll let Ashen do the rest of the talking and I'll see you after for the show notes and as always please share subscribe rate review and support this podcast on patreon or buymeacoffee.com if you can all right I'll talk to you after Ashling, thank you so much for giving me some time on this Friday to chat about new. I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cara. Yeah, delighted to be here. No worries. We will start, as I always do, with a little bit of an introduction to yourself for listeners who don't know and just to get to know you a little bit. So where are you from? Where did you grow up? What's your kind of background in? So I'm from Malahide in Dublin, in Ireland, and... I now run a social network to share and swap your clothes called New, which I'm sure we'll talk a lot about. But um, my background is in music. So I studied music in college, was always really into arts and creativity. And then after college, I went and worked in media for a while. And then I guess kind of uh, fell into entrepreneurship, which is never something that I had expected <laughs> to come to come into. So as we're talking right now, I'm normally based in London, but back home in Dublin again with all our lockdown situations and kind of the way the world has gone. So really liking the working from home, though. Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of like slows down their life a little bit and no one uh, judges you for like going to the fridge all the time to yeah, just snack. constantly watching Netflix and it's all it's all fine now <laughs> it's all yeah, socially it's... acceptable <laughs> and there's also uh less traveling so it's better for the environment isn't it yeah. well you know more Netflix and less commuting and whatnot exactly. so pros, there's just pros there's just pros really um but that's great I had no idea your background was in music do you play yeah. certain instruments so yeah, I was a singer. So uh, I did, I guess, like opera for my recital and I studied music at Trinity. Um, and when you're there, it's not really a conservatoire. So you don't focus hugely on performance. So my, my focus would have been composition. So I loved moving to London, even though it was related to new and kind of entrepreneurship, but just because there's so many musicals and shows. So that was like my dream to just go to them every week <laughs> but uh yeah yeah it's, um, that was kind of my first love I was really really into fashion as well I think it was very much between like Trinity or NCAD and um I just didn't have time to do the NCAD kind of portfolio when I was doing my leaving cert so that was more the choice that was made rather than like what I really knew I wanted to do with my life uh, yeah but yeah, just kind of, I guess things just changed along the way. Okay, so you were, wow, opera singer, that's amazing. And you were into fashion kind of normally as a teenager and whatnot. Mm. So were you working as a singer or were you working in fashion at the time where the idea for New came about? No, so I was just in the university. Um, I mean, we say we say opera singer like 
that's what I did in my degree if I ever like never did any grand performance or anything <laughs> yet but um yet. Yeah. you never know there's still time so um <laughs> so very much like the change came when I was in university and the reason for that was when I was studying I went on the Su- the Suez educational development program and that's a program where generally students um, from all different colleges across Ireland go and spend some time in India. So it's very much you go to a school in quite a disadvantaged area, generally um, an area with slums, and you teach there for the summer. And alongside that, they have a lot of global issues courses and kind of international development courses. So I really liked Suez because it definitely um, it lets you know that you're not going across as a white saviour, like you as a student is not going to be able to kind of change very deep rooted issues that are happening, you know, globally. But also they're just very clear on saying, we hope that you see something that really changes how you view, you know, how the world works, how capitalism works, how um, you kind of have a responsibility to be able to change this once you've seen it. And their hope is kind of that after you've had that experience, you'll be able to go on and bring that home to Ireland and you'll be able to do something hopefully later in life that will um, positively change a lot of these issues that you kind of see. So for me, I think Sue is like really loves new because we came out as the people who basically did what they had hoped someone from that program would do. So um, myself and my friend Ali were in India. We actually didn't know each other at the time. And I was based in Kolkata and she was based in Delhi. It was the year of the Rana Plaza building disaster. So that was a garment factory in Dhaka in Bangladesh, which had collapsed and over 1,130 people died in the disaster. And then many more were injured. So it was a really kind of catastrophic illustration of what was happening behind fashion and behind its kind of beautiful facade. Did that happen when you were there or before or after your visit? So that was April in Bangladesh. And then we went to India in the June of of 2013. So it was very much in the mainstream media in a kind of way Mm -hmm. that people knew that there was probably something going on behind fashion and probably going on behind all the cheap fashion and cheap stuff that we can get. But uh, never really kind of looked under the hood too much. So that was definitely one of the topics of conversations that came up a lot. And Ali, when she was in Delhi, she was able to um, go into a garment factory and, and, and speak with garment workers about their experience. And that was like really transformative for her. The kind of change for me being in Kolkata was after that placement, I'd gone to Delhi. And before I went there, I had heard that there was this market where they sell clothes for high street brands that don't make it across to Europe or the US and kind of Western countries. And I loved fast fashion, like just didn't think of it as fast fashion. That just wasn't a term that I knew. It was like fashion every night, every day, all my money just spent on fashion as a student. Like, do do you know yourself? You're like, yeah, just gonna run to Zara with my friends because like there's this and there's that. Yeah, it's exciting. It's like, it's a social thing as well. Exactly. It was almost an activity and so fun and just like, I mean, fashion the love for fashion has not gone away just kind of an understanding I think has has crept up a bit but I think over the summer when you get to look a little bit deeper at okay well yes it can be cheap fashion for us but like where is that true cost being housed like for people and the environment who is really paying the high price because it is a high price to produce fashion and we just kind of learned so much about it and then when I actually arrived at that market in Delhi my like view of everything was just so different and I just felt so just like ashamed and like almost kind of sick just seeing okay like there's all of these clothes that have been made and everything that's gone into those clothes and they're being sold for next to nothing which is probably because they were made for less than that and so many of these clothes will just they'll never go anywhere they might get burned they might go to landfill they might be worn once so I guess we came home from that, just went back to college and really did just slip back into our old lives. But we met then later two year, uh, in our final year when we were kind of organising um, a, cha- a charity society and got talking just about fast fashion and everything we had seen and the effect that it had, had on us. And I think we were both comforted in the fact that we were both equally annoyed about what we had seen and really frustrated that there really wasn't alternatives that felt affordable And I think sometimes when you look at sustainability or you look at sustainable fashion, it's almost a luxury and you kind of feel like maybe I need to be someone else to be involved in this or 
it's quite whitewashed. It's, you know, it's um, it's seen as sometimes a bit holier than thou. And that can be really difficult to feel that you can be a part of that change if you don't understand it. When I think really what sustainability is, is making sure that everyone can be involved in it and it's diverse because we're not going to become a more sustainable society if we're leaving people behind. So for us, we were always in search of something that would allow us to have an impact on this global industry and move away from something we didn't agree with, but with what we already had and with the means that we had and still being able to enjoy it and not feeling like just because we didn't have loads of money or just because we didn't live in a certain place, we couldn't be involved in that. And then we just kind of realized very quickly that we were already doing it because we shared all the time with our friends. We were just constantly going into each other's wardrobes, stealing things from people's halls. And like, you know, if something was coming up, you'd just be casually taking it. And these were all getting passed around in the groups. And, And that was us. We were using our fashion resources. We were using them all the time. And they were often having a way better social life than us like just as those pieces <laughs> I think that that's kind of where we we hit on the idea of like okay this is a solution to the problem whether or not people know all about sustainability or they're eco queens they can start this right now and if we can make some sort of a platform or a network that makes this easier and makes it a real viable and as fun alternative to fast fashion then we can really create the change that we wanted to so badly do I think that's amazing so you and Ali then did you guys pretty much graduate from Trinity and set this up then how did it how did the beginning come about because you weren't an entrepreneur as you said yeah it was like it was a way kind of longer process so we were like thinking about the idea then we went to a program called the ideas collective that Suez actually runs which basically they realized that a lot of people when they took part in Suez, really wanted to to change things when they came back, but just didn't really know how to start. So theirs was a very chill yeah. kind of incubator program where you just chat about your ideas and you come up with one way to do it. So from that, we just started a swap shop and we used to run it in the basement of a wigwam on Lower Abbey Street. And they just used to give us oh, a space yeah. for free. Yeah, they were so sound. Um, and, and we ran it for, for months. Like we just we just wanted to do something that we felt would create some sort of a community um, in then like uh, in Dublin and then later on in Ireland that that really I don't know fostered sustainable fashion and brought people together who cared about it and and this is about four or five years ago I mean at that stage sustainable fashion wasn't really as mainstream as it is now there was still a lot of education mm-hmm. around it um, and then we had graduated but we were able to get onto this trinity program called launchbox where it's a student incubator program so an incubator is basically when you have an idea but it's it's not really anything yet and you can get a bit of funding and a bit of time and support to be able to look at this as, as how it's going to get into a business and i think the reason that new turned into a business was we very quickly realized it just takes a lot to build something like this like we need to build tech and tech is expensive (laughs) so we kind of started from there and this was like a steep learning curve into like why is business how do you set it up what's funding where do you get it um how do you plan how do you scale how do you trial and so that that was all things that we learned along the way and I was working in media at the time and Ali was doing her first master's and then I'd applied for the New Frontiers program, which Enterprise Ireland runs. And it's a six month entrepreneur program that essentially gives you a stipend that that really allows people to leave their, their job and, and go full time at an idea that they have. So we got onto that. And at the same time, Ali got offered a master's in Oxford. So she went and, and pursued that. And then I decided, I actually like think new is worth just going with. Like, let's just see where this goes. Mm. Um, Yeah, like kind of scary to just you know, say, okay, like, we'll just take this leap. But we always laugh because uh, I think if I had found out earlier that Ali had got her master's, I never would have had the courage to like apply thinking it was going to be me kind of becoming a bit of a self founder. But just the way it worked out was, um was really good. And so that kind of gave us the, the start point of, um yeah, just being able to, to give it a go. And our first trial was, me going back to Trinity and going around lectures asking girls in in the lecture halls if they could email me photos of dresses they had worn to the ball the year before and I'd put them up on this um like makeshift website and then people would ask to borrow them and I'd put them in WhatsApp groups together and like they would arrange to meet up and collect the dresses it was so manual 
but it was great there was like 60 people yeah. borrowed it for the ball and we told them all about their environmental impact and like had chats and just we were like okay this is um okay this could be something so that's yeah just where, where it all began Oh my God, brilliant. It's, it is such a good idea. So for anyone listening who doesn't know, how does the app work? What, what does it do? Yeah, so it's a social network to be able to connect with like-minded people and share and swap your clothes. So basically it's a flat membership service. So it's $9.99 per month. Um, if you do three or six months, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper. But essentially once you're a member, you upload your clothes to be able to lend them out to other people. So say if you had a dress you bought for a wedding or a ball and you want to be able to share that around because you love it you want to keep it you might not be ready to part with it let's say resell it that can go off and have a life in between and then you can borrow from other people and then we've also brought the swap shop online so if you have pieces that you are ready to part with you can upload them and you can get either a gold or a silver token and then you can use that token straight away to be able to take a piece that's new to you so it's kind of like if you were to walk into a swap shop you drop your clothes you get your tokens and then you browse the store and then you be able to take home some pieces so with new it's all about kind of recirculating pieces as much as possible and as quickly as possible so there's no transactions once you go in there you don't have to buy from other members or rent from other members um, and like that it's not a money-making tool for our community it's just about being able to more easily access the fashion that isn't getting enough wear in our wardrobe and then underneath that you can look at the carbon waste and water offset of each share or swap that you do on the platform so for every time you share a swap a piece, you'll offset 25% of the resources that would have been used in the making of a new garment. So if you were to share a swap four times, you'd offset one piece from being made and one piece from going to landfill. And I mean, that that stat is, is a little bit old. It's from 2013 and fast fashion has got even faster since then. So you're probably actually offsetting quite a lot more, but we, <laughs> we just need the correct stats to sit underneath that. <laughs> Yeah, but so you're kind of doing multiple things there with the app. You are offsetting carbon, you're stopping clothes mm-hmm. going from landfill, stopping them being made and like all the water that goes into it is just crazy when you yeah. start looking into it, into like one t-shirt or something. But then you're also saving money. Like if you're going to say, I know now it's a bit hard, but outside of <laughs> lockdown times, and we will get there again, there will be events. But if you're going to say wooden wedding or one christening yeah. a month or something, you know, you'd usually be spending more than 10 euro on a new outfit because there is this really annoying pressure not to wear the yeah. same thing twice. So you're saving money, I guess, in the long run. And with that fee, like it's comes the security of you know you're not posting something to someone and then not getting anything in return or you know you'll get it back so for borrowing you'll lend it for short term and that's exactly it like I think with fast fashion on the face of it it can kind of look cheap like maybe you're spending 50 pounds or sorry I keep saying pounds because I'm over in London all the time you might be spending um, 50 euro on a dress um and at the time you're like oh okay that's actually not too bad it's not three or four hundred or anything like that but over time, you're, you're buying so many and you're not actually getting, I guess, like a return on investment on the pieces that you're actually buying. Like you are paying 50 euro to essentially wear something once or twice. And that just doesn't really make sense. We're all in that scenario. So it's like, OK, well, if you have something and you wear it once, I'll wear it another time and loads of other people can wear it and then you can wear all of ours. And so it's just saying, OK, like you're contributing some pieces and then you're just becoming a member of this community. And then with swapping, it's for those pieces that you just are like, look, I'm I'm not going to wear this. I think sometimes reselling can just be a bit difficult, especially for high street pieces, because like depreciation and all the things that go along with that. I think ultimately we just like new because it's more about the clothes. So it's just trying to really authentically bring that sharing with friends mentality out. That's just kind of taking money out of the picture for a little while and just saying, actually, what I really want at the end of the day is to wear some really nice clothes and, and do it in a bit of a guilt free way. And we just kind of want to take the pressure of of money away from that all the time and just think more, OK, well, we can all actually in, enjoy these outfits. And over time, the hope is that we can just, you know, save a load of money for our avocado and toast things as us <laughs> millennials and stuff but uh yeah it's just to try and get people out of the habit of actually buying fast fashion all the time as well and um I mean yeah I feel like I've saved a lot yeah. of money because I, I just don't really buy clothes anymore <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Like, I, I bought three new tops this week. Just oh, all started on a search for bowls. <laughs> I just needed two bowls for the house. So then you're look, walking into all the charity shops. And then, you know, while you're there, you're like, I'll have a look at the clothes. And I bought like three tops for under 12 euro because I just, I don't have enough. You can actually see for anyone watching on YouTube, this is my clothes rail behind me. And like... I don't know. Some of this stuff this year is a bit different, but there's dresses here that I literally have not worn like yeah. since last year, which is so bad. But I just yes, like them too much exactly. to get rid of them. It, but they and are, you're like, they I'll definitely wear that again. And that's the thing. It's some some pieces, if we're looking at, you know, trying to give everything those 30 wears, it doesn't always have to be individually done by you because, I mean, the, it, the nicest thing about yeah, fashion that's so is true. you get to really change it. Like, that's why it's so exciting. And so it's sometimes not even that we don't like the piece it's that it's really fun to wear different things so it's just like okay well if we're trying to balance that we just need to get a bit more smart about it to actually be able to do it in a more sustainable way and it's just like okay how do we get that kind of um changed wardrobe rotating wardrobe without you know without just doing brand new stuff which is yeah there's loads of ways we can do it so does this is this like a location based thing at the moment or how is that working can you swap anywhere yeah so it's all across the UK and Ireland now so originally it was Dublin London and Cambridge and that was really because we were building the app so we just didn't know if it would work um so we did a lot of trials so so when lockdown happened because we had it in three different locations people used to meet up in person and because it was quite small and it was just starting that was great and really really good for community building but we did a partnership with UPS and Parcel Motel when lockdown happened and their locker drop systems because um, it just became like people can't meet up in person anymore. But what was really nice is that that just gave us the ability to scale. So now we have it split at the minute between mainland Britain and Ireland and Northern Ireland. And the reason for that is just we didn't want to jump straight to kind of air miles going on top of pieces of clothing. We thought it would be better to build it up in in local communities. But a little bit further out than that, it should be a location setting in the same way that you would have dating apps. You can search near you. You can kind of decide your own radius. So that's kind of where we hope it will go to. We just need to build the technology that goes around that as well. But right now you're able to just um, use like the likes of Parcel Motel is what we recommend in Ireland because it's actually the cheapest way to send parcels, especially ones that are a little bit heavier. And they're working on a five year low impact project with Trinity. That's that's how we kind of made the connection to just look at how do they reduce the environmental impact of the logistics that they provide. And in terms of um, looking at regular postage versus the likes of post- Parcel Motel, regular postage they send things depending on what needs to be sent. Whereas Parcel Motel is standard delivery. So they have the same route that's happening every single day. So adding to that is actually a lower impact because the route is set. So that that was really interesting for us. But it's it's been amazing to be able to expand across Ireland as well because we did start in Cork um, kind of like just before the app launched. And it just, like Ireland is quite small in itself you really want that variety of supply and it's just kind of nice to feel do you know like it's just annoying if if like you live in Ireland and there's something that's only available in Dublin and you're like oh, what what is the point in that so it's just been really nice to to now have it as like really accessible like everyone can join and it's just I don't know it's really nice that's brilliant no well done like it's such an achievement it's fab Thanks. um for like more kind of like specific things about the clothes available the there's one thing in say like the depop and secondhand community that there's not a lot of plus size clothes out there do you find are there yeah uh, are there plus size outfits on new? yeah there are and we're working really hard on this so we've done a lot of size diversity panels and focus groups around okay how do we make sure that this platform is accessible and diverse for everyone because I think just within the fashion industry as well you have this kind of bell curve of like size kind of 8 to 12 is like always an ample supply and outside of that it can be really difficult the thing about new as well is that it's crowdsourced so we're putting a lot of effort into trying to find people of diverse sizing and encourage them to put up their pieces the one thing that's kind of difficult is that you'll want to go on and see things in your area that you really want to actually start doing it So what we've done is a partnership with the Dublin Simon community. So lockdown, I guess, has been difficult for loads of different industries in different ways. But one for charity shops is that 
they've got a lot of supply coming in, but it's been difficult with social distancing measures and everything around that to kind of get those pieces out to charity shops quick enough. And then we're always risking these kind of closes of charity shops as well. And there was like a period of time where a lot were closed. So basically we did um, a partnership with them where we bought some of their supply directly from Simon Community. And then we put them up on the app as part of the swap supply to kind of get people going and get people involved in it. They were great. So like when they had plus size pieces, they put them aside for us and kind of did a rail and a collection. And then we'd go in and collect oh. it. So so we just got um we just got a mannequin, which has been so handy because otherwise it was like me and <laughs> us on the team trying to model things. But it's been great because we can do a range of different sizes where people can really see how it's going to look. And then that's been kind of a trigger for people to be like, OK, great, there's something for me. So like really up to size 20, we're starting to cover now. And then we really want to start looking more at 20 plus. And we're reaching out to brands who do kind of cater for plus size that we can try and partner with and get a bit of supply in because we think that there's a lot of work to do on our end. It's not really enough to kind of say to people who are in those size categories, can you please provide the supply? Can you please do this? Because it's, it's really hard. It has to be kind of a team effort for everyone. So what we're trying to do on our side is to kind of get that initial supply ourselves and make it as fun as possible for everyone who's joining and making sure that our photo shoots are diverse and our campaigns are diverse and like involving a lot of different people different races, different sizes, different backgrounds, and then being able to kind of build that community organically. And we're really aware that this doesn't happen overnight. Like we've been working on this for a year now of like really, really trying to to get diversity right. And it's always going to be a work in progress, but it's very much on the radar because it's, I think, something that needs to be consistent effort for a long time to, to make sure that it doesn't fall, you know, out of the mindset or, or doesn't just kind of end up being a platform for people who are, you know, straight sized or, um, you know, sizes like eight to 10 and just, yeah. And, and people kind of feel that they come on and, and there's nothing for them. That's really not the experience you want. Yeah. yeah. No, well, that's really good that you're working on that. That's fab. And at the moment, is it just typically like female presenting kind of clothes, feminine clothes? Are there any plans to do male kind of clothes in the future? Yeah. So at the minute, it's a lot of, um, we have like women and people who identify as women on the platform and it, it definitely is w- leaning to women's wear. The reason for that at the beginning was a lot of it was based around occasion wear. And um, we did a lot of focus group with guys and they're like, look, I have a suit. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're like, OK. <laughs> um, we... <laughs> I have the one suit. I'm fine. Yeah, and they're like, I don't I don't need it. So we're like, right, OK. Um, <laughs> And where where we always kind of felt um, it actually could work for guys was more in swapping. But I think what's kind of interesting when you really dig down, because, you know, we want to make sure that these platforms are accessible to everyone. But we had a lot of conversations. And the thing that come up a lot, which we just found so funny, was for so many guys, they would describe their wardrobe as like, I have a blue T-shirt, I have like a red T-shirt and I have a black T-shirt. And my red T-shirt, it's really old. I can't wear it anymore. I've used it loads. So they'll go out and just specifically buy a replacement red T-shirt. And like (laughs) this cycle will begin again. (laughs) We were like, oh, you guys are kind of sustainable. Like you really wear your clothes. So that's kind of one reason that we really started focusing on the women's wear market because a huge amount of the impact kind of comes from that. And I think we need to be also prepared and ready to cater for a whole other demographic when we want to go and do that, because we don't want guys to come onto the platform and actually feel like they're having a really bad experience because there isn't the kind of supply that they need. So we're kind of finding that even in our diversity work that it's like, okay, we really need to, you know, put all of our effort into something if we want to do it right. So for now, it's, it's definitely leaning that way. But in the future, we would absolutely love to branch out and even branching out into like, the likes of drag costumes is something that's so exciting for us and something that we've chatted about a lot with members of the drag community. It's like these amazing outfits that so many people like wear a couple of times for different performances. But they're outstanding. And we were like, oh, it'd be amazing if you guys could like borrow these from each other and stuff. So so just different things. And then if you have to think about like maternity wear, like that's the time that people are changing their clothes so much, but they're not going to use them kind of, you know, once their baby is born. So very interesting but I think we we have to rein ourselves in and calm ourselves down a little bit to be like okay we can't actually serve the entire world all at once (laughs) 
Yeah, bit by bit. Well, they sound really like really exciting ideas. And I guess this is something I wanted to ask about now. Now seems a good time. You are crowdfunding at the moment. Yeah. So what is that for? How will it work? How can people help? Yeah, so crowdfunding is essentially democratizing the investment um sphere i guess so like normally when you're a business we're we're a tech business that's looking to scale so for us we kind of need to build the tech underneath it and then have people um become members of new so it's very investment intense we need kind of like capital to be able to to build that out and create what it is that we're trying to build and then when we get users on board we're able to sustain that so we're raising crowdfunding which essentially means that anyone can become an investor in new. So when you're investing in a company, essentially a company is made up of shares. So if you take it like it's a pie and every share is a slice of the pie and depending on how many shares you get, the bigger the slice of the pie is. So you can buy a share in new for £12.35 and then once you're an investor, you'll get kind of like updates on what we're doing, you'll get to grow with the business and then you share the success of the business. So ideally what happens when you buy shares is that your share is let's say £12.35 and then five years later it's 10 times the value and it's worth 120 euros or sorry 123 euro or something like that so then you'll be able to basically make a profit on the share that you've bought but you'll be able to kind of support the business in that so when you invest that money goes into running and scaling the business so over the next six to eight months a lot of what we're looking at is traction a, B, testing different kind of subscription models and then building out the tech so that it's more user friendly. There's a lot more involved in it. There's a lot more kind of content and that there's a lot more, um, I guess, like logistics behind it as well. There's like partnerships, there's insurance, like building all of that out so that once we get six to eight months down the line, we have a product that's properly working, a community of people who are using it and that can kind of scale, we hope, globally. So you can crowdfund through different platforms. And the one that we've crowdfunded through is called Cedars. So basically you buy the shares on Cedars and Cedars take care of everything else. So they do all the legal work, everything around that, which is normally the barrier to people actually investing. And then you're able to keep your, what they call Cedars portfolio. And it tells you all about how the business is performing, how it's doing from year to year. And then you can also sell your shares on a secondary market which is um, basically if you'd like to try and they call it like cash out your shares early, you could see if anybody else wants to buy them off you. It's not always that people definitely will. So we always have to be really clear when we're talking about investment that your capital is at risk. So just don't go blowing any savings on like investing in new, like just don't, just don't do that to yourself. But Ashling does not want to tear any families apart you guys yeah no like like we are so not into that right now we're just like guys if you have a couple of bob that you'd really like to see and if it did like startups they fail all the time they're super high risk so like just be if you got to be able to lose that as well but it it does essentially go into us being able to build the business so we're raising 115,000 and then on top of that we have a convertible loan note from the London Fashion Fund of, of 25k so that's going to give us our six to eight month runway. And then in the future, we'd like to raise a seed round, which is a bit larger, which is kind of when you're looking at like your million round and things that really help you scale and build full teams and, you know, create the jobs and kind of build everything with that. But essentially, we, we did this because we always feel like we're community led and we have a lot of passionate people in our network who just really believe what we're building and our kind of vision of making fashion better is important. I think it's also important for people to feel like they have ownership and they're a part of that team. Fingers crossed you get everything that you need. Um, To go back to the app then before we kind of start wrapping up, if someone has, if they're on the app and they've got clothes that they want to share or swap, how do they do that? Do they need to kind of upload specific photographs? Are there tips for doing that? It's more about just like showing a really clear image of the piece that you're, that you want to share. And you as someone who wants to be a borrower or a swapper, like what kind of things would you like to see? So generally if you can do it on yourself that's great if you have like a picture of an event that you went to where you wore the piece or like if you were at a wedding like and you actually had a photo from that event that's perfect like just pop that up otherwise if you're doing a hanger photo just to make sure that it's in good lighting so that the color is actually 
the true to color and then that people can actually see like what the piece looks like that it's not kind of like really dark or like on the floor where it's like crumpled up in a ball and stuff like that's just you know no one's going to really know what the piece is and and it kind of brings down the the experience for everyone on it um but also we've added in news photo service so you can we're kind of testing different pricing for that now but essentially you can just let the new team know what you'd like to share or swap and then you can send it to us and we can either photograph and keep it for you or send it back. So it's just for, say if you have like a few items and you just really haven't found the time to photograph them, but you'd still really like to get involved in the platform and kind of know that they're going off for another life, we can just handle all of that for you. And then you'll get your tokens. Uh, for borrowing, you can just start borrowing, but for swapping, you can just get your tokens even before the photographs have been taken. And we can just kind of do that in the background and you can can start enjoying the platform. But it's just um, it's just super easy. Like I think sometimes the thought of getting photos prepared is is more difficult than or kind of makes it feel more difficult than when you're actually just taking them like selfies in the mirror perfect there's no pressure at all when it comes to that it's just um it's just trying to get as many of those pieces out of your wardrobe to be honest that is very useful yeah um and uh, when you're swapping the gold and silver token i presume depends on like if the piece is like designer or kind of more expensive is it yeah, yeah. So silver is generally um more high street stuff and then gold is kind of like mid market and above, but they can kind of straddle each one. So we really did that. We learned that actually from swap shops before as well, is that we don't really want to we don't really want to be tiering stuff, but there's just sometimes a massive difference between like the different kind of values that can pop around the platform. Um, so I'd say like the majority of stuff that's that's on the platform is silver. You just get some kind of key pieces that come in, like coach handbags have gone up sometimes. And it's like, oh, here, that's amazing. And it kind of encourages you as well to, if you do have things that are a little bit more expensive or you do have those pieces and you're really not wearing them, it's a nice push to just get them out of your wardrobe because I think we can kind of hold on to things and, you know, we're happy enough to shove out everything that we're like, oh, that's grand. I don't really care about that. That's grand. But there are some things that like, look, they're good and you did spend money on them. But they just are not having a life. So if you need a push, that's kind of where the gold token comes in as well. That's really cool. Okay, so that's how that works. And then when people return them, I presume you, you're expected to like clean them before yeah. you do for your borrows and stuff. Yeah, so so if it's a borrow and it's, and it's short term, when you upload something, you say, this is how it should be cleaned. Sometimes people actually say, could you just give it back to me and I'll clean it myself. I have a couple of things like that where they're your they're handmade or something and I just kind of know how to take care of them and I'm, I'm just happy enough to to be honest to, to clean it at that point but you have the option um and then also when you're sharing something there's like a terms and conditions that goes between borrower and lender so as a lender you let us know the retail value of the item and the current value of the item and as a borrower you're also told that as well so if something did happen there's like a process in place to be able to get reimbursed and we kind of come in as a team and really help with that and even if it is you know once in a blue moon sometimes some things do happen they can often be repaired I've basically learned that any stain can actually be got out if you know the right techniques (laughs) Uh, yeah there's an amazing site called love your clothes and it has incredible like I got a bike oil stain out of a baby blue dress so like yeah just wow top tip Like getting the bike oil stain, sorry, this is going on a bit of a tangent, but getting the bike oil stain out was actually like lip balm. You rub the lip balm into the bike oil stain and then you soak it in Coca-Cola and then you kind of like push the stain out and then you do it again. So, I mean, I had tried everything with this and then it worked. And I was like, oh my God. That's crazy. I see, you see Coca-Cola being used for some crazy stuff and you're like, you're like, why does that go into our body? (laughs) yeah it doesn't seem right <laughs> something ain't right here but okay that's all right i'll definitely yeah. link that so people can go check out that website because uh, that's so something good that's... yeah biro pens like just coffee stains everything Grass stains i'm terrible for like just being a child and like rolling around yeah. the all the time <laughs> not thinking about it so that's really good to know there was one thing about kind of working conditions that i wanted to fall back on um where does the line kind of fall between making sure garment workers are being supported and treated fairly but also not boycotting them completely so that they lose their jobs like have you got any kind of insight to that yeah that's a 
I guess like one of the w- widest comments on on fast fashion is like, okay, well, if we don't buy fast fashion, who's going to have jobs? I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain the system like a little bit just to give people a bit of background. So if you took um, in-house manufacturing, so if you had a brand that designed clothes and made clothes in the likes of Ireland, you'd have complete responsibility and oversight with that one brand and you'd have the labour laws that we have in Ireland. Outside of this, how the fast fashion industry works is you have companies where the clothes are designed, outsourcing the production of those clothes to factories. Those factories don't always make the clothes. They can then outsource again to different factories and that chain of responsibility gets more blurred. So you have... A brand that can say, okay, well, I got this factory to make the clothes. Whether or not they did, I didn't know. I can't stand over this. It's not my fault. And then you can have those factories really not being held accountable because local labour laws aren't kind of like they are in Ireland. And then the book kind of doesn't really stop at anyone. And then that's how you kind of get disasters like Rana Plaza. Another really difficult thing is that you can have these factories record what they would say is a living wage but the anecdotal stories that come from a lot of people who work in those garment manufacturing centers saying no I'll get docked pay if I go to the bathroom if I do something wrong if I have a delay if I don't stay late enough also you can have really um difficult circumstances where you'll have factories outsourced to women and children in their homes and that can often be this kind of um like slave labor really true slave labor where there's no payment involved so this is really really concerning but what what the brands can say is we didn't know but we what we would want is brands knowing exactly what's happening Mm. so I guess it's that side of it in terms of is this job fair for anyone to have okay it could be great to have a job among a really difficult set of circumstances where you could have a job slash not have a job. But is that really the standard that we're going to kind of use as our baseline of what's okay when there's clearly enough resources and money that can absolutely give those people a fair wage? So it's really about trying to move the money from the brands that are willing to do that into the brands that treat people right. And if those brands do well, they become the competitors of the fast fashion brands and they become the and when fast fashion has competitors, they are pushed to be what consumers want. And so if we push brands to do that, they have to make the change. Like the Environmental Audit Committee in the UK did an amazing report called the Fixing Fashion Report. It had a lot of different recommendations on on things that could be done for recycling, things that could be done for different labour laws. But ultimately what they were saying in the hearing was, can you make a shirt for five pounds in a way that's ethically produced and within the limitations of our environment? And the answer is just simply no. So it is more expensive to produce clothes in an an ethical way and sustainable way. There's no getting around that. It's expensive to produce clothes because those people deserve to be paid and they deserve to have insurance and unions and a good life, essentially we're buying it for a a cheap price in terms of money but someone is actually paying that cost so the cost that's really being housed is the exploitation of people and overproduction of clothing and, and really like degradation of our planet and so for us we don't want to just be boycotting fashion completely we want to be putting money into the fashion that's doing it right and that can be difficult and that's why we wanted to create new because we still want people to partake in the fashion industry but we want to be pushing people towards sustainable fashion. And if you can't jump straight to that, can we just use the fast fashion that's out there and then slowly be able to over time kind of change our behavior? But it's um like it's a completely broken system and it's not enough for us to kind of say, but it's better than a, no system at all. There's not ever not going to be a system. It's going to be there, but we just really need to push for it. Yeah, and you guys are a great account to follow on Instagram as well because it's not just, you know pretty dresses and clothes swaps you do share a lot about workers rights garment workers rights so yeah yeah and I think it's about educating people of that in a non-judgmental way like myself and Ali we got to go to India like that is massive that's a massive privilege like not everyone can can do that and I don't think it's fair to kind of 
shove that in people's faces either and be like, well, this is all going on in the world. And they're like, here, I'm I'm going to pennies. Like I'm not, you know, not going to feel good about myself or I'm not going to look good in the clothes that I want to wear just because you've got to go and like see all of this stuff. You know, like that's, that's just not what we wanted to get at. And so with new, we just wanted to create this kind of community where it's like, look, there's loads of stuff going on. So we're just going to like break it down. Once you know, you can start changing. We can all do this together. It's not you on your own. And it's like, you'll get stuff right. You'll share clothes one day. You'll go to Zara the next day, but you'll have worn that 10 times more than you might have if you didn't, you know, know the background behind it. And it's like kind of saying, okay, we have a real opportunity here if we don't, you know, tear people down, if we just kind of bring people along and inform them and give them, you know, bite-sized information that you can start to digest and, and chat to your friends about. And I think what's so nice about fashion is like, if you're borrowing or swapping something, that's a conversation that you can have with your friends over drinks. That's really nice to bring that up at the table. That's not just like, have you heard about textile recycling in the UK? It's not as we need it to be. And it's like, everyone's like, no, just leave the party. Like no one wants to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And so, and so that's like what we were basically trying to strike the balance of like, let's enjoy fashion, but along the way, like let's learn about it. Cause you know, it's, it's, and I think if people are really interested in learning about it, there's an amazing documentary called The True Cost and it's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just yeah. great. Well, on that note, Ashling, unless there's anything else you want to cover or touch on, I think we chatted about so much there. Yeah. And it's, uh, you're, re- you're really doing something amazing providing oh, this surface and on your platform. And it's just wonderful. So I hope this episode inspires some people to get out there swapping and even if they you know at the moment haven't got the 10 euro a month to spend to encourage them to just swap with their friends anyway just contact us like we don't want we don't want money to be a barrier like we want to we want to you know build something that's sustainable but like just drop us a dm like we don't want anyone to not be able to use the platform because they don't have the subscription fee like we're you know we're always giving out promo codes you heard it here, guys. You okay. heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, that's, it's truly wonderful, wonderful what you're doing, Ashton. Thank you so much. And thank you for just being another person, doing something good for the environment <laughs> of the planet and looking amazing as you do it with Thanks your fashion book clothes. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that was Ashling. I hope you guys enjoyed that and took something from the conversation. And even if you're thinking that you might not download this app, hopefully it will have sparked you to think about swapping clothes with your friends or family. I used to do this all the time going out in college when you haven't really decided what to wear. Or I have this particular skirt that just doesn't suit any top that I have and any time I wear it out I'm always I end up borrowing a top off a friend because they usually have something that matches it and it's it's quite nice and I've got these photographs from nights out in college of me in dresses and tops from the girls that I lived with that I that I didn't actually own I know it's quite it's quite nice I actually forgot that I did that I'm not I don't go out as much anymore obviously COVID is one thing but even before that I just I just don't go out that much but it is nice to have something new sometimes and it doesn't have to be new to you it can be someone else's but you still got that new feeling you know of a new fresh new outfit so yeah swap them with your friends there's no shame in it and swap them with your family and you save so much money and you save clothes going from landfill and you save carbon and pollution so it's a win-win so thank you again to Ashlyn for the work that she's done for being a deadly person to chat to really really good crack and thank you for listening I really really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe and rate and review if you're listening on apple Podcasts. and as always check out my patreon and i have a once-off kind of support if you can't afford regular support like patreon you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com but on patreon you'll get exclusive kind of behind the scenes updates and content and news and links to what past interviewees and future interviewees are up to. Give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and I'll keep you updated there with any kind of politics that come through like the Climate Action Bill and protests to get involved with. So keep minding yourselves and I know 
some of you might, might be feeling down since watching maybe the David Attenborough documentary or because we're in lockdown three or just because the state the world is in, just remember to vote for any listeners in America because I do have a few. Hello. Don't forget to register to vote. And everywhere, every, everyone everywhere should make sure that they're registered to vote. And every meal, every purchase, every time you're thinking of doing gardening, you have the power to make positive choices and make good choices that make a change. Literally making a pile of leaves and twigs in the corner of your garden will really help insects and bugs and biodiversity and adding a tiny tiny little lunchbox digging a hole in the ground and making sure the top of it is level with the ground and filling it with water after a couple of days there will be life there. So we do have a biodiversity crisis as David talked about in his documentary. Look at me calling him David like we're pals but you can do something about it and if you want to learn more about that and if you haven't already go listen to episode 15 and episode 27 they're both about what we can do as individuals with our tiny little patches of land whether it's a windowsill or a field what we can do for the environment and you can see instant change and you can make a difference to critters and animals in your area instantly so we do have the power so don't forget that it can be it can be really hard to be hopeful sometimes in this world but you can make a difference to the biodiversity directly around you you really really can so that is my little hopeful message that i'll end on in these precarious times as always get in touch if you have any suggestions or feedback and don't forget to check out the website bookofbees.com if there is any bookofbeespodcast.com sorry if there's anything in the show notes that isn't being linked correctly and yeah i think that is it don't forget to check out new on instagram as well and go support their crowdfunding if you can all right I will talk to you again in two weeks time. Mind yourselves, wash your hands, wear a mask and make a pile of leaves. Bye.